about creation, they reach to a point where they think about the Creator. And step forward, they ask themselves, who created the Creator? Because Satan is always trying to make their mind busy with this kind of questions. It is narrated by Anas ibn Malik. Rasulullah said, People will not stop asking questions till they say, This is Allah, the creator of everything. Then who created Allah? A tricky question by Satan, which brings lots of people in doubt. So there's a God. Then you have to say, but sorry, where did God come from? It's not a question I hear often answered. In another narration, Abu Huraira who reports that Rasulullah said, Satan will come to one of you and say, Who has created the heavens? In answer, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he asks, Who has created the earth? And again he answers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he asks who has created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If any one of you comes to such kind of thinking, should say, I believe in Allah and his messenger. It doesn't mean that Islam has no answer for it. It means a person shouldn't think in such manner that there is a creator for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, Islam has answer for every kind of question. Therefore, when a person asks such a question from you, don't stop him because everyone has the right to know about Islam. So when he asks who is the creator of the creator, then another question rises. Who is the creator of the creator of the creator? And then another question. Who is the creator of the creator of the creator of the creator? The sequence continues unlimited. Is an elementary point in the philosophy of science. Suppose astronauts were to find on the backside of the moon a pile of machinery there that had not been left by American or Russian cosmonauts. Uh, what would be the best explanation for that machinery? Well, clearly it would be some sort of extraterrestrial intelligence that had left the machinery there. And you don't have to have an explanation of who these extraterrestrials were or came from or how they got there or anything of that sort in order to recognize that the best explanation of this machinery is intelligent design. In order to recognize an explanation as the best, you don't have to have an explanation of the explanation. In fact, when you think about it, requiring that would immediately lead to an infinite regress of explanations. You would need an explanation of the explanation, but in order to recognize that as best, you need an explanation of the explanation of the explanation, and then an explanation of the explanation of the explanation of the explanation, of the explanation. and so that nothing could ever be explained. If we say, what caused the cause that caused the universe, then let's continue. What caused the cause that caused the cause that caused the universe? Let's continue. Then what caused the cause that caused the cause that caused the cause that caused the universe? Let's carry on. Then what caused the cause that caused the cause that caused the cause that caused the And that goes on and on and on backwards. But at one point, I have, I have to have an uncaused cause. Or there would be nothing in existence today. Think of uh, a string of dominoes. You have a domino that knocks over a domino that knocks over a domino. I have to have a first domino, or that string of falling could never start. So when it is unlimited, it means that there is no end, and a rational mind cannot accept that there is no end. Or in other words, if God has a creator, then he is not God. Indeed, his creator is the real God. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Ikhlas. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد Therefore there should be an ultimate creator who is wise and eternal 
that by his supernatural power caused the universe to come in existence, and he is no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.